Welcome back to my channel, everybody. This is Donnie, and you're watching Diamond Painting by Donnie. As some of you may know, my New Year's resolution was to um, file away all my leftover drills. And the problem is that I've had to think this over in my head for a really long time on how I wanted to do this. And I'm talking two years. I've tried different ways of doing it, and I've seen many other ways of doing it, and I kind of liked the way it was done, but there was just problems that just would get in the way and bother me. So, um, I'm sure a lot of you do this. Um, I'm going to put my own little twist on it. Um, but I've seen a lot of people using binders and putting their leftovers in the binders and using these baseball, these card sleeves. So, because I finally have it in my mind what I want to do, I purchased a very large pack of them. It wasn't very much. Um, I'll link it down below. I got it on Amazon. And this should be good for, you know, at least one notebook. <laughs> I bought three different notebooks because I want to separate my drills. I do not want to mix, like, my Diamond Art Club drills with the stuff I get from AliExpress and there's some other companies that have better standards as far as their drills go that I want to do separately. Like Diamond Dots, their drills are actually a little bit larger than every other round drill. So I will have theirs in a separate binder as well. So that's three right there. And I know I have one other binder that I wasn't thinking of when I bought these to put for a fourth one. So I also got these on Amazon. I found the least expensive I could because it's not something I'm going to be using every day. It's just something to hold my extra drills. It's a three inch three ring binder. As you can see how big this is. Let me pull my camera up a little bit. There we go. So this will hold a lot because you know when you put start putting drills in, in here, the pages are going to expand. So, you know, even though all of these would fit in here, it's not going to be very convenient once you get the drills in and it's expanded from that. All right. So, um, firstly, what I have to do, I'm going to set these to the side. I've been using my diamond painting club boxes okay for leftovers i have uh, two three four five boxes and they all have stuff in them but i've used three of them to sort to keep the extras in so this is the one that i keep my diamond art club leftover drills in so i haven't finished a lot as you can see, but this is what is left over. They've been kind of all put into one baggie and I'm working on a couple more of theirs right now. So there will be more in here as time goes by if I don't keep on top of it. So that's why it has a big box. Others have like the ones from AliExpress. It's extremely full. So I keep it in here and I keep this with it, which is, um, something that also came in one of my club boxes and it's it's just a diamond painting log chart um the thing i like about this one is it does not have colors on it so that's what's really thrown me off is because each company has their own um way of labeling their colors they do use the dmc numbers but some companies, their numbers will look different than the next company's exact number. It will be not just a shade off. It will be way off. I'm going to show you, for example, it, it depends on what, what their charts are printed on as well. Like this chart here that comes from ZSJ, it is printed on a canvas. So the colors that show up here are going to be different then this DMC chart made by DMC. The shades will be completely, I mean, I can guarantee you not every shade is going to match. 
and I found that with other books that I've purchased to try that out as well. And that's okay um, because what you're looking for is really um, a color to match. When you put your drills away, you're looking to put them away. And then when you need something of that exact color, you need to be able to go get it. And more than likely, from all the different stores on AliExpress to the ones on Amazon to the ones here in the United States, you can take the number and it's not going to match the ones that are in your in your leftovers, even if it's the same number. So you need to match it by color. So you're going to use the color itself and not the number. I mean, the number can give you a guideline as to whereabout it might be, but, you know, it's not going to be perfect. So that's why I am making a chart. I'm doing a separate chart for each company as well. So this is going to be my DMC book. So, I mean, sorry, my Diamond Art Club book. So any, any diamonds that are left over from Diamond Art Club will go in here. Now, um, they do have square and round. So when I put them in this book, I, uh, put them, I put these, these strips on myself. It came with the strips and I just added it on. Um, all at once so that when it comes time I can just do what I need to do to put the diamonds in the right spot so anyway these squares are large enough to hold four lines as you can see I have one color on there already that's 3770 and I only used up half of the square so the uh, the top half will be for my square ones you don't have to do this but it does you know just help you to match the colors. It, well, you do need to do this on um, this particular book because there are no colors, but you don't have to do round and square. I just want to do round and square to show that I actually have that particular shape in that particular color. So I believe that is, no, the, see this is 945, so that's a different color. So what I what I will be doing is matching my taking this first one see I'm using these are from my Christmas cards and these were actually made by Diamond Art Club and so these are Diamond Art Club drills sometimes like their keychains those are not made by them so I didn't keep the the leftovers which were rhinestones in with the Diamond Art Club I used I put them in with my rhinestone leftovers but a lot of these colors are similar I actually had nine different ones and I um, used the ones from the other packets so I didn't have to open some new ones. As you saw in the box, you could probably see that I still had some unopened packages. That is why. All right, so let's go with, I want to go with a number at the very beginning because I'm going to start the book and I want to start basically at the beginning. And so I'm looking if they have a 150 or 154 in any of these. I'm not thinking, I'm thinking I'm not going to find it. Okay, so I'm still kind of processing how I'm going to do this as I go along. Let's just start with a 310 because it is a very common color. Um, uh, the way I did these, it makes it to where the bags have the numbers upside down and that will make it hard for me to reuse these packets but I'm gonna try anyway I'm gonna see if I can take the sticker off and just flip it over but for now I'm gonna uh, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is so I needed a little tray here all my trays have drills in them right now I'll just put a couple out 310 these are not in numerical order so you kind of have to find them. I, I believe they're going to be by color. Um, so give me a second and I will find 310. I don't have the chart memorized. I'm not sure which column each color is in. And I like that they have left, they have extras um, as well. I'm, 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 still kind of curious as to what this number is at the bottom um it doesn't click with me as to what it is 
because there's nothing on here. Um, this says a DIY chart to be completed using your spare diamonds. Should you need extra diamonds to complete your chart, get them here. No, that's okay. I have plenty. Uh, all right. Let me look for 310. Give me a second. All right. So I scanned this whole thing. And guess what? 310 is the very last one on the very far right column. So, um, yeah, I do have another video that shows how to put away your, to give your DMC numbers that don't have numbers, a number. And in that one, I do it by, you know, matching them up to whatever's on the paper, whatever the color is, and that is still holds true for companies that don't have a number. So you can actually find one to match it with. Um, this is a little different because this is me organizing. So I have, like I said, because I'm going to do square and rounds on the same square. I have this little ruler here and I have made a little mark on there that indicates the halfway point between them so that I can make sure to get it in the right spot. First of all, um, I need to get the top cover off. So my finger is very delicate right now because I cut it. <laughs> cleaning my scissors. All right, so very sharp exacto knife. And I'm gonna just take and um, make it a um, mark going across. That way I'm just cutting the top, sur top layer of the adhesive. And then I line that up so I know where the halfway point is because I'm only gonna pull off the second half because I don't have the squares right now, I just have the rounds. So now I have a spot to put my rounds. Oh, I didn't get the whole layer of... All right. So now there's no adhesive there. And I, I put actually um, 12, 12 drills on there. Yeah, let's see if I can find a drill pin. <laughs> I have so many drill pins. Here we go. This is my little fox. And I think it needs wax. <laughs> yeah, get me a different one that has wax in it. Uh, I have a lot of multi-placers here too, so I don't... I pull one out and it does not have... I could do multi, I could do six at once. I just don't have a trach, so that makes it a little hard. Let me just put some wax in. Uh, all right. Okay, got some wax. All right, so we're, I'm just gonna place two rows of six on here. I mean, this is something you guys know most of the time, but for people who are new and don't have not tried putting their diamonds away or organizing them or whatever, you'll know my method at least. Uh, this isn't, you know, doesn't mean this is the way it has to be done. This is just the way I finally decided I want to do it. And I thought I would share it with you all because, um, that helps when people get different ideas on how to do things L like myself. Like I said, I've been watching for two years and now I finally came up with something that I think is going to work for me. And I hope it works because I haven't ch tested it yet. I'm testing it with you guys. All right. So there we go. I've got my blacks on the all lined up nice and pretty. Oh, I just dropped some. And there they are. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is this is going to go in one of the sleeves, but I'm going to add something. So generally you're going to want to put them in numerical order. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side right now. 
but I make sure that it's in that book before I put it in the notebook because if it's in there, that means I have leftovers of it. So let's get, let's get the thing open here and pull a sleeve out. Okay, I don't think these are the best quality, but I will work with them and if they start ripping or something, I'll look into getting a better brand. But for what I was looking for in bulk, this will work. So you're gen you're, if you want, like with Diamond Art Club, they have AB drills. And so their AB drills I will put here first because they are below 150. So I probably will actually have another page. But see, I'm going to do it this way for now so that I can, I'm not giving a permanent number to one of these bags. And, but, I mean, one of these sleeves, but I don't want to have to keep moving them over every time I get new ones. So I'm going to actually make sure there is, um, a method to the madness. Okay. For instance, I want to, 310 is towards the beginning of the number chart. I'm going to make sure I have one for each square, each one square for each number that's on the number chart before this. And that'll determine where on this it will go. I will do that at another time. I don't need to do that right now because you know what I'm talking about. So they will be in numerical order at that point. But I'm just putting the bag there. And then the books, then this is going to go into the book. But, okay, for these only have, yeah, okay, for some reason, I was thinking they were double-sided, but they are only on one side. So there's only a pocket on one side of them. I guess some of them you can get have pockets on both sides, but for this one, I don't know. Maybe they don't, um, now that I think about it, because you want to be able to see the back of your card that you use for baseball cards. So I like these baggies because they actually stick out a bit, and I don't have to dig my fingers in there to be able to pull it back out. And... So next, what I'm going to do, uh, put it in the binder, but it will already be in the binder if you get all the squares, the numbered or counted out. And you can even write something at the top or on the edge or something. So you know that this will be for numbers such and such through the next nine and that way you can kind of find them when you go to look for where to put away your next ones but I think maybe out on the outside would be easier to see or tabs maybe putting tabs on them okay but if a lot what I've seen happen with a lot of people is when they start putting their bags of drills into these it gets heavy and if you put it on a bookshelf the heaviness weighs it down and then the pages will start, you know, going like this when you go to open it and they end up flopping all over the place. And sometimes the drills fall out. I was thinking of actually, um, making, okay, this is an, another thing I'm going to do with it as well. Not thinking of, this is what I was going to do. Anyway, I have a bunch of this card stock that I got when it was on sale at Michael's and so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it all right so I have different colors I have purple and pink and white and I figure I'll start with the purple first okay let's go with dark purple all right so we got cardstock here that should stand up pretty well right I'm going to get my three hole punch get a hole in it or three holes actually not a hole I'm missing my little thing on the end it broke off so I gotta make sure I get it right okay so now I have a three hole punch I mean I have this ready to go I'm gonna put it this is another reason why I wanted a really big one I'm gonna put it behind here now, to keep them from falling down, and the 
fact that they are only one sided, this really actually helps what I'm thinking to do. So I have these leftover strips of magnets that I use in my, um, the travel containers that I sell in my Etsy shop. So I am going to take these and I'm going to attach it. I'm going to, let's see. Yep. I'm going to just cut off the length of the of the sheet so it's actually it goes the entire way across and so yeah I'm going to just take a strip I this is just the size that this ended up being I have a lots of scraps that I will go and use I can actually link the magnets for you down below as well but if I put it at the top there and then put another one over here on the cardstock. This is just an idea. I'm hoping it works because um, this is what's kept me from doing it this way. I have not wanted to do it because I was afraid of them falling over and that would drive me nuts. So, okay, this doesn't go all the way across on the cardstock piece. But this way, you know, I, I could put another one down here at the bottom or something or tape it to it. You know, you don't even have to use magnet. I, I just thought of that. You could, you could actually um, glue this to the back. But I have these magnets and I thought that's, you know, a good idea, you know, use what I have and, and then it will help hold, hold these up. So I think I'm hoping that'll work. I mean, it might still, it might still weigh it down a little bit going from the top like this, but it's not going to fold over on itself and make the drills fall out. Okay, so now I'm going to take another piece, and this is what I'm going to do because sometimes you pick your, your things up upside down and they fall out. So I'm just going to take and cut a piece of the cardstock about yay wide. How far? That's about an inch and a half. Well, it started out an inch and a half and it ended up being an <laughs> inch and three quarters. And as long as you can see the number on your baggies, that's what's important. So these things, I'm going to cut them a little smaller so that I can have one for each. I know it kind of you're kind of probably going like what is she doing? I don't understand. <laughs> and but you'll see in a second. I I'm not being really accurate either. I mean, if you want to be super accurate, get your your ruler out and do it that way. All right. So I don't think you would really need to have something super heavy. But I don't even think it needs to be this large. In fact, let me see. I'm trying to think how this is going to work. Because you want to want, I want something that is going to keep it from falling. Oh, okay. I remember now what I was going to do. Okay. I'm going to make it so that you can tuck it in. So what I'm going to need to do is put my label of what color, what the number is on the bags. They need to be further down so I can actually still see it. Or I can just write it on the piece of paper. But there is a good spot. I don't have to glue it. I'm just going to actually use some washi tape. You're going to want to use washi tape that will hold. 
Um, I'm not sure how well this one will work. This because I haven't used it in a long time. Make it pretty, use different colors, whatnot. So now I have my three tens in there. It has a little hat, I guess you could say. And what happens when I put this away or I pick it up and it's upside down? Oh no, it's upside down. Guess what? My drills didn't fall out. My bags did not fall out of it because I did that. So this is what my idea, what I was thinking of. I probably will even use um, different colors for the, a different color for the little lid thing because, you know, it's good to keep it in there and then you can, um, I probably shouldn't um, make it so long to be able to get it back out. In fact, let me... Let me redo this with it a little smaller because it's just to keep the bag in place because we don't need to have it um, just like a little lid, a lip for the envelope. Okay, so there we go. And I think that works pretty good. I don't know if you could, you may not even need to tuck it in. Let's try. Okay, so we have it here and yeah, it's not falling out. You don't even need to tuck it in. It's it, because it's just a lid, just a overhang to keep the bag in place. It would have fell out if I didn't have that there. Let's see. Well, let's chat, test it. I had to work hard at it, but the heavier the bag that you have in here, uh, the easier it is for it to fall out. So there we go. You can, oh, you can make this really cute like people do with um, scrapbooking. Use different washi tape, um, different color for the hood. Make it just unique. Make it yours. So I hope you guys liked this idea. Um, let me know what you think. And let me know what type of variation you do that you think I could maybe add to this or adjust to make it work even better. Um, like I said, the magnet thing just came to me because I wanted some way to be able to keep these up. But it may not be the best idea because I'm sure... There's going to end up being a lot of magnets. I mean, I could probably just put them on the corners. I don't need to do the whole strip all the way across. Or, you know, just tape it to the back, glue it to the back. I mean, what do you think? How do you think that would turn out? I mean, because you know it's going to get really big um, with all these cardstock in addition to these. But I that's why I got such a large um, ring binder. Um you can get these magnet um, sheets at Walmart. I, I got it on Amazon because I, I needed a, a large amount of them for my shop. So um, if you can find it somewhere else cheaper or for more for what you need, great. Um, but I will link um, where I got mine for you so that if you want to just use my links, click, click, click and have it in two days and you get started then I'm glad you could make it work that way because I don't like having to go to the store. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so I'm back. Um, I actually had this video uploaded and everything, and then I decided I needed to add this on. So all last night, I spent getting all those leftover drills from my Christmas cards organized. So I got them all in the book, which is right here. I managed to get every single one of them in. And I did figure out what that number is. I don't know why. I fig I have I have at one point I forgot. I didn't know what it was and then I figured it out and then I'm looking at it again and I forgot again. But all it is is, is it just tells you which position in that column 
that that number is in. So it goes down one through 26 because there's 26 different spots in the column. So because of that, I realized, hmm, that will make it a lot easier if I label each one that goes in here. So like 310 here, my little flap, I just put that it's 310 and it's column 19 in position 16. And since I have really dark paper, I used a white pen to do my writing. And I also realized that in my Facebook group, I forgot we had these. Um, they are drill checklists. So there's like three different types in the same vial. In this first one, it shows uh, the S and the R for square and round and then the DMC number and it's only two pages and and it has um, extra spots for those other drills like I'm I haven't run it into into any of the AB drills yet but when I do I'm gonna list them on this page here uh, what are all these marks I'll tell you um, I put a mark after every ninth number because this way I know where in the book it should go. So the first nine um, is page one and so on and so forth. So you end up needing 51 pages and that's without accommodating for any AB drills. Uh, like the one thing about automation, <laughs> Jim told Alexa to turn off the lights and it turned off my lights in here. So anyway, what was I saying? Um, 51 pages and this makes it really easy because like when I went to do 310, I knew that it was the third from the last or you can count down from the front. So one, two, three, you know, whatever. So it's the seventh position. If I'm going this direction, you know, uh, I will link the um a doc the doc this document down below below it's in um oh what is that file called <sighs> pdf and i i just put it in my dropbox i mean my drive and i have the link available to share so you're more than welcome to download it and use it to your for your convenience whatever you want to do with it um and also see how you saw you saw me put this magnet on this first page and I got to thinking that's going to make this end up being really thick and heavy, but it's going to be really thick along the top for one thing. So I decided that I will just put a piece, one piece. It's good enough. I tried it out. It's just as sturdy to put, I just put a square here and I made it a lot simpler. I just put the magnet on here. And then put the other piece on top of it, peeled it off, and then was able to lay it. That way I get it lined up perfect. And um, like on this one, I have it at the top. And I'm going to alternate so that, well, I didn't alternate this one. But that way they're not going to build up here. But as you can see, I got smaller and then smaller and then smaller. Uh, and then I got one back here put away. So yeah, you can see I just have little little squares of it and it works just as well I mean I'm still I think it's still gonna be a good idea um, I can always write notes on here if I need to write notes of some sort I don't know what I would write but um, I was able to cut these little squares into two inch by uh, I don't remember one and something so they're not really big. I was able to get a bunch out of one sheet of paper. Um, my uh, pa the packs of cardstock that I bought come in packs of fifty. So I might have to go get more if I'm gonna get all these books organized. But you know, it's gonna take me a while to get one done. But yeah, I'm actually enjoying myself, <laughs> and. Um, I stayed up super late because I was actually having fun and then my back was hurting so I had to go to bed. But I haven't gotten much as far as putting them in here but that's what I'm doing now. I wanted to upload this video and then I'm like, well, people are going to sit there and they're going to watch this video and tell me exactly what those things are, those numbers are, 
and I'm like, okay, I already figured it out, but just so you guys know, I do know, so, um, I, I, it was just a old woman moment or something, forgetting what it was, because all I had to do was look at all the numbers, and they go 1 through 26, but I think that was it that I wanted to add in. You know, the main thing was I wanted to be able to link this checklist for you so you can have it available. And um, I also like these notebooks because they have the pockets on the inside. And it actually has a spot on the outside. So I can just slip this in here, too, if I wanted to. I could put this page on one side and then... Uh, the other page on the other, but one thing I didn't think about is squares and rounds. Do I want to combine them into one binder? I think I might do that to start with because, like I said, I don't have a lot of leftovers for Diamond Art Club right now, but once I do, I might need to start a second binder. And I do know people that actually keep set two different binders, but because of the fact that I am doing a separate binder for each company, I'm thinking I'm not going to have as many leftovers and as thick pouches as some people would. And the variant of color, that's another thing I'm not going to have. That's why I'm sticking with this one company. I'm keeping all my leftover drills just for this one company so that I don't have to worry about the colors being off. And in fact, when I go to start a new project, even even if it's a small project, probably, um, I could actually just pull my drills from here instead of open all those new packages. And I could probably do a small diamond painting with just the leftovers I have in here, if I have all the numbers. So that's just one way of being able to use my drills and make sure they're not going to waste is by, you know not opening new packets and <laughs> just doing and then if I lose some I'll definitely be covered but I think that's it guys I did reuse my baggies too I was able to salvage most of the stickers by flipping them around and yeah I'm really getting into trying to reuse some of this plastic instead of tossing it straight away all right guys so I already said my goodbyes but um, you'll probably see them after I'm done here. So thanks again for watching. <laughs> Back to the video. Bye. This is my beginning of getting my New Year's resolution taken care of. And I hope some of you got some kind of use out of this video. Helpful hints. Um, maybe you can adjust the way you're doing things if it's not working for you. And use some of my ideas to help you out. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have fun diamond painting. And don't forget to always sparkle wherever you go and whatever you do. Take care, everyone. Bye.